Welcome or welcome back, everybody. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate you stopping by for part two of every NFL team in three words. This is going to be the AFC edition. If you missed the NFC edition, make sure after this video, you go back and watch that video if you end up liking this video. And if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content from me in the future, We're trying to hit a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, and it would really help me out. I would really appreciate it. But I don't like to make my intros too long. Let's just get into the first team. Let's go to the AFC East. Starting off with a Super Bowl contender for the Buffalo Bills, McDermott without Dable. The Bills, year after year, get a ton of praise and get held up in the classes of powerhouses across the league, but they still have not been able to break through in the playoffs, even with a franchise quarterback. And that might be because they play in a pretty stacked AFC, but that's no excuse. Allen is an amazing talent, but when it comes to the playoffs, he's been outclassed by other great quarterbacks consistently. Now, without Dable running the offense last year, they almost lost to a Skylar Thompson-led Dolphins team in the wildcard round before looking completely lost against the Bengals. With as much talent as is on the roster right now, Sean McDermott has to prove that he can take this team to a Super Bowl without Brian Dable. Because this franchise has had enough patience in the past. They cannot waste another ultra-talented roster. For the Miami Dolphins, ticking to a bomb. Coach Mike McDaniel was great in his first season, even if they did struggle a little bit towards the end of the season. But most of that, though, was due to Tua missing several games from several different concussions. The roster has only gotten more talented, now adding arguably the best corner in the league, Jalen Ramsey, to the secondary and already having possibly the best wide receiver duo in the league on offense. Expectations are incredibly high, even in a very tough division. But one more concussion to Tua could force him into early retirement, and without him, they stand no chance. Their hopes hang on the thread of Tua's health, but considering how young he is, it seems like it's just a matter of time before he takes too hard of a hit again. The Dolphins have to make the most of him while he's still able to go out on the field. And for the New England Patriots, Belichick's unfamiliar territory. The Patriots reigned over the AFC East for about two decades in the Tom Brady era, and outside of a few outlier years, never really had much competition from the other three teams. From 2001 to 2019, they won the division 17 out of 19 times. But that's not the case today. For the first time in the entire time Belichick has been in New England, they unarguably have the worst quarterback in the division. They're betting favorites to finish last in the division as well, something that Belichick has never done with the Pats. This is all unfamiliar and uncomfortable for Bill Belichick, I'm sure, but if he's not retiring and Mac Jones is going to continue to be the quarterback, he better get used to it. And for the New York Jets, is Rodgers washed? That's the question that's going to decide whether this move is looked back on as genius or stupid. Rodgers had what was probably the worst year of his long career last season. But the two years before it though, he won back-to-back -back MVPs. Now, was his lack of performance due to the lack of his wide receiver one, Devontae Adams, or was it due to his age? Well, now you have your possible wide receiver one of the future, Garrett Wilson, so we're about to find out. I understand they didn't want to risk wasting the talent they have right now by swinging and missing again on another quarterback, like they did with Darnold and like they did with Zach Wilson. But I really wanted them to draft Anthony Richardson and develop him to be the quarterback that leads this team for years to come. Instead, with Rodgers, you get five years max out of a 40-year-old who might already be regressing. This is a huge gamble that could go down as a big mistake or a huge success. We're just going to have to wait and see. But the last time they took on a former Packer Pro Bowl quarterback, it didn't go all that well. First up in the AFC North for the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson reloaded. This has got to be a Lamar Jackson revenge season. If it's not, he risks getting labeled as a one-hit wonder. Now, I don't think he deserves that label, but people are going to start saying it. People have already started saying it. Jackson's only real flaw is his inability to stay healthy. Part of that is his play style, but you can't ask him to not play like Lamar because that's what makes him so great. 
you can't take Lamar away from Lamar Jackson or else he's just an average quarterback. And I feel for him because it feels like they still don't have the talent necessary on offense to support him. It really doesn't feel like he has the elite weapons that the other great quarterbacks across the league do. I mean, unless OBJ is miraculously like elite still after two ACL surgeries. The AFC is stacked with great teams right now and their own division is a tough one. This path to the playoffs right now is going to be a pretty tough one for them. Unless Lamar Jackson can return to MVP form. For the Cincinnati Bengals, decade-long playoff locks. So long as Burrow and Chase are on the field together in Cincinnati, they're going to be in the playoffs. Their connection is just on a different level, and they've had such early success that it feels like it's just a matter of time before they break through. But to do that, they're going to have to go through Mahomes. But we've seen them do that before, so it's not impossible. They just have to finish the job this time. For the Cleveland Browns, easily most hateable. No explanation needed here, really. What was once the most down on their luck team in the league, pitied but also mocked by all, finally seemed like after years of drafting at the top of drafts, finally seemed like they were building a team that would pull them out of the gutter. But instead of continuing to build through the draft, after a few bad coaching hires decided to give up on their former first overall pick quarterback, Baker Mayfield, and paid the man that was the most hated person in the league, notorious woman respecter Deshaun Watson. At least now though, I don't have to feel bad about what was a weird desire to see the Browns fail. I was just a little early. And for the Pittsburgh Steelers, Tomlin always wins. No matter how bad the team may seem, come the end of the season, Mike Tomlin always pulls the Steelers team to at least eight wins. He's never had a losing season in his 16 years in Pittsburgh. But coaching what looks like the worst team in the division in what is a very tough division might see him experience that first losing season. I'm not really sure what the future of this team is. Omlin is too good of a coach to let them lose, but winning 8-9 to nine games every season isn't going to get you good enough picks to rebuild this team. Tomlin's going to pull off his magic and get this team to a respectable win count, but I'm not sure that Steelers fans want another 5 years of an average roster over and over and over. Alright, now onto the AFC South, starting with the Houston Texans. Tank paid off? All that losing since the Watson scandal kicked off finally looks like it may be coming to an end. Picking at second and third overall in the draft, it would have been pretty hard to mess it up and it definitely looked like the Texans didn't. Drafting their hopefully future franchise quarterback CJ Stroud and then immediately after the player that many people think was the best player in the entire draft, edge rusher Will Anderson. While their future looks a lot brighter now than it did a few months ago, the outlook for this coming season probably isn't that good. But now that they're not tanking for a quarterback and actually going to be trying to win games, there is an outside shot that they could be a surprise team for a wildcard spot. Ultimately though, I think they fall short. For the Indianapolis Colts, Rags to Richardson. It's probably my favorite one that I came up with. <laughs> From the rags of a revolving door at quarterback ever since Andrew Luck retired a team left to try desperate attempt after desperate attempt to patchwork a passer. Now they've finally given in to hit the restart button and hope that their first round pick can lead them to future riches. I'm a huge Anthony Richardson believer in his future, but we all know that coming in he's pretty raw. Pause. He might not even start the year as the starter for the Colts. When the Colts initially picked him, I was a little worried for his development until I saw the coaching hire of Shane Steichen, last year's Eagles offensive coordinator. I like this team's future a lot, but next year, they're probably going to be pretty bad. For the Jacksonville Jaguars, sneaky championship chance. After a taste of playoff success after their crazy comeback against the Chargers, it looks like the Jags are ready to be playoff threats for years to come with Trevor Lawrence under center. 
He looks to be living up to the hype he was drafted with, and I even have him as an under the radar MVP pick. Not only are the Jaguars favorites to win the AFC South, I don't really see them having much competition for it for the next couple of years. And for the Tennessee Titans, rebuilder in denial. Look, a team that's drafted two quarterbacks on day two in the last two drafts obviously isn't confident in their quarterback Ryan Tannehill long term. Trading away his best weapon and one of the best young wide receivers in the league last year, AJ Brown, shows they aren't confident in him in the short term either. And trading for a more expensive and older wide receiver, DeAndre Hopkins, shows that they don't really know what they're doing. So why is it that this team is still refusing to sell their older pieces and just restart? More than that, why are they doubling down on older pieces? King Henry is going to take you to six or seven wins just by himself, that's just who he is. But if Willis or Levis don't pan out, you're going to have to do a hard reset eventually. Because as indestructible as Henry seems to be, his legs aren't going to last forever. On to the AFC West for the Denver Broncos, a massive overpay. Do I blame the Broncos for moving on from Nathaniel Hackett? No, of course not. I do blame them for making me watch that man, a man so in over his head, coach 15 games, but we're beyond that. They did need a new coach, but the amount they gave up to get Sean Payton in a rare trade for a head coach was a lot, and a lot more than I was expecting. The team is just naturally going to be better because they don't have the inept coaching of Hackett, but I just don't know that a first and a second round pick is worth it to get a guy that has never had success without Drew Brees quarterbacking his teams. Especially when you had opportunity to just sign a guy like Flores or Bienemy or Shane Steichen. No matter what though, I don't think that they can ever live down the fact that they had an opportunity to sign Brian Dable and didn't. Regardless though, I think they're going to be a good team. Even in a tough division, I'll take them to go 10-7. and seven. And for the reigning champs, the Kansas City Chiefs, dynasty in progress. Belichick and Brady reigned for the decade before this, but now a new kingdom has emerged in Kansas City, with Mahomes and Andy Reid ruling the way, and may rule for the next decade. Any that question the roster either don't know football or only do so because they're looking for attention, the wide receivers aren't going to be a problem. Because that's the main concern with this team, but their number one wide receiver just happens to be a little bigger than most and play tight end. Any future Super Bowl contenders coming out of the AFC for the next 10 years or so are likely going to have to go through Kansas City first. They aren't invulnerable though, we saw that a couple years ago with the Bengals, and they will have no shortage this year of challengers for their throne. For the Las Vegas Raiders, McDaniels last shot. Josh McDaniels has gotten way too many second chances for a guy with a 38% winning percentage. Now I understand the accolades as an offensive coordinator, but is it possible that that's because he was, I don't know, coaching under Bill Belichick and had Tom Brady? I don't know, maybe a little. For the last 20 or 30 years now, the Raiders have had a serious case of thinking they're smarter than everyone else. And time and time again, whether it's on a free agent signing or a coaching hire or in the draft, they prove they're the dumbest in the room. But even they seem to have figured out their mistake with McDaniels and reportedly would have fired him already if they weren't too cash poor to buy him out of his contract. Yeah, the team that just moved to Las Vegas can't afford to fire their coach. But if McDaniels continues to fail as epically as he has, they might just have to take out a loan to do it. And for the final team out of the 32, again, if you missed the NFC side, go back and watch that video after this. For the Los Angeles Chargers, wasting another quarterback. Through Dan Fouts, the start of Drew Brees' career, and Phillip Rivers, the Chargers still do not have a Super Bowl to show for it. For a pretty great quarterback history. While none of those guys are Brady or Montana or Manning level talents, they're still long-tenured, multiple-time Pro Bowlers. 
So many teams across the league have never even had one of those guys of their talent level, and yet the Chargers have had three, and now have added a fourth with Justin Herbert. Yet just like the other three, his talent is being wasted by poor coaching and classic Charger chokes. Let's hope for his sake that he doesn't have to go through what Phillip Rivers and Dan Fouts had to with this team. But for that to happen, or for that not to happen, they have to get a better coach than Brandon Staley. He was a great defensive coordinator with the Rams, but he has not been a good coach. And like I said, that's the last team for this video. Um, if you enjoyed the video, like I said at the beginning, give me a like. Uh, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps me out. Uh, and if you want to see more content from me, hit that subscribe button. I would really, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, and uh, if you got any comments on what I said about your team or any of the three word puns that it feels like I did for half the teams in this video, that's pretty much what this video was. They make me laugh, so I like them. Uh, if you liked them, if you hated them, let me know down in the comments because I, I like talking to you guys. I like hearing your thoughts on stuff because um, uh, a lot of you guys come with like really interesting conversations and I, I really love talking to you guys. Um, yeah, and I, I just appreciate knowing that you guys are uh, engaging, you know, with the with the stuff. It really makes me feel good about putting all this work into these videos that I do. Um, yeah, I appreciate you being here. Uh, I am um, going to be moving, so this may or may not be my last video in this set up here but it shouldn't be too different um but i, I just want to let you know because the next video after this one may take a little bit to come out even longer than mine usually take which is usually a little bit i'm sorry about that i, I try to get them done as soon as i can but it takes time uh but yeah it, it might be a little bit of a delay but i'll be back i'll be back with uh with some more content so hit that subscribe button make sure you don't miss any future content and uh if you did miss that nfc video go back and watch it anyways i'll stop shilling I'll see you later. Bye.